Welcome to Electron Line. Now let's take a look at the early history of quantum mechanics and all the contributions that resulted in what we know today. Of course, our understanding of quantum mechanics is by no means complete, but it took a lot of effort from some very, very smart, intelligent people over many years to slowly break the secret of quantum mechanics. For example, when we go all the way back to 1838, Michael Faraday discovered cathode rays. We, they ran a current through a vacuum tube, a large vacuum tube, and they saw a faint glow. And so they knew that something happened between the cathode and the anode, and so they called them cathode rays, which of course now we realize that those things are electrons, but at the time they didn't know what they were. They just discovered and were able to say there's something there going from one plate to another in this vacuum inside this tube, and they didn't know what they were, so they called them cathode rays. Then going to 1881, we have George Stoney, who was able to actually estimate the unit of charge. That was a tremendous accomplishment. Of course, he didn't get a very accurate measurement, but he knew that it was somewhere in the order of 10 to the minus 20 coulombs. So then they ended up calling that charge electrons. So they knew that there was some unitary charge, called it electrons, that had a charge of around 10 to the minus 20 coulombs per charge. Then back in 1897, J.J. Thompson was able to show that those cathode rays that were discovered way earlier actually could be deflected since these charges were electrons and electrons have a negative charge associated with it and when charges move through a magnetic field they can be deflected so they were able to deflect those charges and from that deflection studying that deflection they were able to come up with a ratio of the charge per mass and they knew that ratio was around 2 times 10 to the minus 11 which then resulted in them estimating the mass to be about 10 to the minus 31 kilogram per electron Again, not quite accurate because later on we found that it was closer to 10 to the minus 30th, but at least they were right on the right track here. In 1909, Robert Millikan did a brilliant experiment. I'm always marveling at this particular experiment. The oil drop experiment, he was able to, sus to suspend oil drops in air, balancing the electrical force repulsions of the electron with a positive electric field to the forces of gravity pulling the oil drops down. And he was able to show that depending upon if there was one or two or three extra electrons on that oil drop, he was able to balance the force of gravity with the, with the electrical repulsive forces or attractive forces. And from that, he was able to accurately describe and calculate the charge of a single electron to be 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. That was a tremendous feat, adding a lot of understanding to the field of quantum mechanics, the early field of quantum mechanics. Then, of course, Albert Einstein cannot be forgotten. He had huge contributions to our understanding of quantum mechanics. He came up with the idea that there was a relationship between mass and energy, which is now a big cornerstone of the understanding of quantum mechanics. Of course, the equation e equals mc squared is so known to everyone around the world now. But he's less known for the thing that he did here called the photoelectric effect. He was able to show that light itself was quantized, that light was not a continuous stream of energy, but it was actually an accumulation of small little quanti of energy, small little chunks of energy, and he proved that with the photoelectric effect. Then going back a little bit further in history again, back in 1814, Joseph Fraunhauer, very famous name in physics, was able to show that there was an absorption spectrum. Earlier than that, uh, Isaac Newton had already shown that when you take the sunlight and shine it through a prism that it shows all the colors of the rainbow. But then when Fraunhofer took a look at that rainbow and, and uh, amplified it so they could look at the very fine detail of that rainbow, he began to see small little dark lines that were missing lines. That was what we call an absorption spectrum. The light coming from the sun had all the colors of the rainbow, but there were many, many of those dark lines, missing colors, very fine little lines in that entire spectrum. And so that discovery, indi again, indicated that something was going on at the quantum level. Then later on in 1855, Gustav Kirchhoff, again a very famous name, we might know the name Kirchhoff more in electricity magnetism when we use his, his rules of, of circuit analysis to come up with the current in a circuit that, that has multiple uh, voltage sources. But again, he did, of course, studies in other fields of physics as well. And he was able to show that when a gas was excited, that it produced what we call an emission spectrum, a very 
a set of very fine lines of color, again, indicating that there seemed to be something quantized going on with the emission of light from this gas. So there was something about the properties of the atoms and molecules in the gas and the way they produce light in very fine quantized, very fine chunks of light separated from one another with big gaps. So you can see that over the years, very intelligent people with very bright minds went in and studied these things and began to slowly unravel the mystery of the small quantum world, thus establishing things that was the basis of our understanding today. You can see it was a long time ago and since, the, since those days, over 100 years ago, we can see that today we're still trying to add to that understanding. Of course, the equipment that we use today is much more complicated, much more expensive. We have huge accelerators in which you smash atoms together, in which smash particles together, trying to understand what's really going on at that level. But you can see it had a meager beginning, but these meager beginnings really set on the understanding of a new field of physics called quantum mechanics.